Hi, I'm Jack, the product manager for Cara VR, a suite of plugins for Nuke for dealing with 360 video VR material covering everything from stitching through standard comp workflows to headset review. In this video we're going to run through how to use the headset review options using this shot from the mission courtesy of New Deal Studios. Cara VR supports a variety of different headsets including the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift via a few different back ends that vary depending on platform. Different versions of different headsets are supported to varying degrees on different OS's. For full details of what headsets are supported on what OS, as well as for what third-party packages and drivers you need to install for your particular headset and platform, please see the Cara VR manual. Also, check out the various gotchas detailed in there, as getting set up can be a bit fiddly. For example, uh, the Rift DK2 support on OS X, you have to ensure the old, deprecated, official Rift SDK is not installed and grabbing access to the device on startup. Or, on Linux, you have to make sure that the OS is not configured to lock access to the USB devices. Or even for the Vive, the Steam VR runtime has to be installed and running. To use a headset, you first have to ensure that all the relevant drivers, SDKs from the manual are installed of the right version and that the headset itself is working in the manufacturer provided test applications. The headset needs to be plugged in and switched on prior to launching Nuke as the devices are scanned when the application starts up. Here I'm on OS X and I'm going to show you the use of the Rift DK2. I'm going to use Nuke Studio to show you this in both the node graph and the timeline environments. This is because the Nuke interface differs for the two environments when working with monitor out plugins, which is how the headset support is implemented. Let's start by working in the node graph environment. Here we have our stitch read in in a few different guises. We'll kick off with a single mono case. So here we have our viewer hooked up to this left only view. You'll note this is in lat long, which is what we need for the monitor out plugin to work. So you have to feed in lat longs in 2 to 1 format aspect ratio. Now we'll press S over the viewer to bring up the viewer settings panel. Down the bottom of the panel we can find the monitor out interface. If this section is greyed out, it means Nuke couldn't find your device. So check it was on when you started Nuke, and if so, go back to the manual and check all the required packages are installed, configured and versioned correctly. This first device list is the most important. It'll depend on what HMD you have and what platform you're on. On some platforms, it can't differentiate between the HMD and standard monitors, so you may see a full list of all monitors and you'll have to flip through the list until the image is drawn on the headset. On other platforms, you may find multiple instances of the same device, for example on Windows. If you have a Rift CV1 plugged in and both the Rift SDK and Steam VR are installed and running, you may see your headset appear with options to output via either the official SDK or SteamVR. I'm going to pick the Rift OpenHMD device here and then enable it. And now my DK2 is showing this lat long. This is just monoscopic at the minute. The left view is being duplicated into both the left and the right panel in the headset. If I flip the output mode to stereo without changing anything else in the uh, node graph, it's going to look very strange in my headset. This is because the monitor out plugin has to assume that you're feeding it the left and right views side by side interleaved into the current view. Because as a monitor out plugin, it can't access the individual views from the node graph. If you want to use stereo mode, you need to have your left and your right views interleaved like this in your current view. Here I'm looking at a pre cooked side by side in stereo mode and it's looking fine. If you're conveying the left and right views in Nuke's views architecture, as in these last two cases over here, you'll need to use the side-by-side -side node. So configure it to place the left and right views side-by-side, -side, as in this case with the stereo EXR file. And now as we zoom out you can see the B box now contains the second view. And the left and right are appearing in the headset fine. If you're playing back in here it can be helpful to toggle on no incomplete stereo as this can prevent what feels like a strange sync issue when you're going from one frame to the next. In general though, the node graph environment is more for single frame review. So let's switch this off on this side. In my project, I've got a similar set of clips imported. Let's start off with a mono sequence. So here I've got left going into both my left and right views. Rather than using S over the viewer, you need to use the monitor out panel, which is found in the panels list. This can either be docked or you can pop it out float, whatever you want. This presents similar controls but laid out a little bit differently. Most of the lists will look familiar, 
but you'll notice that we're actually seeing view selectors as well. In this case, because we've got a mono sequence, they won't make any difference. So I'll switch this to Rift, and now he's feeding out on the headset fine. As with other monitor out plugins on the timeline side, you may need to hit this to flip the overall orientation. Stereo in the timeline is a bit different. Check out the Nuke Studio manual for more info, but here I have a stereo clip, as you can see from the green V, in a stereo sequence. Now I'll switch my headset to stereo mode. The timeline side, the monitor out plugins are actually able to get access to multiple views. So here I need to pick squeezed side by side and then ensure that my left and my right views are picked correctly. This is now feeding out the stereo output to my HMD. This wraps up this section on HMD review, where we've looked at previewing your lat long material on various HMDs from within the node graph and timeline environments inside of Nuke.